Good morning, Eddie from Springer Solar. Let's do a little check-in on our Nudgee College solar system that we installed a couple of months ago. Uh, the video was, uh, was a bit of an insight into a commercial solar system preparation and installation. Now let's look at the data and see what's going on. It's just before 7 a.m. here. The school's actually in school holidays at the moment, so the load in the property is a lot less than it normally is. But I'll, I'll, I'll go through each of the three 100 kilowatt systems. We'll look at some of the data and we'll look at how the system's been performing while the school has been operational and look at some of that daily detail. So Nudgee College TR1, so this is Transformer 1. This is up in the top end of the school. Um, at the moment, we're seeing zero kilowatts of uh, solar generation. You know, it's pretty dark outside. It's um, prior to 7 a.m. And the site is using, or this part of the school is using 12 kilowatt hours. Um, no one really there at the moment, but as we scroll down, I've picked out a day while the school was operational. I've also picked a, you know, perfect solar day where we can see the solar curve in the orange. We can see the load in the background and we can see how the solar is affecting the load and affecting the interaction of this part of the school with the grid. So on this day, we produce 326 kilowatt hours. You know, from a 100 kilowatt system, that's, um, that's pretty fair for a, uh, for a winter output system. Uh, in summer, we'll see as high as 550, 560, 570 kilowatt hours. This system is flat to roof, it is winter, so the output is lower. This part of the school used 726 kilowatt hours for the day. So the system produced sort of less than half of the usage, but all of that energy, or nearly all of that energy, was self-consumption, tiny little bits of energy exported to the grid. So the energy behind this curve here at self-consumption is offsetting the full rate. So it might be offsetting, you know, 20, 22 cents, 24 cents per kilowatt hour. Nudgee is a big user of, of electricity. Uh, I'm unsure of their exact rates, but that it'll be lower than your domestic uh, uh, rates and lower than most commercial rates because they're a huge consumer of electricity. So on this day, Nudgee won't actually see a lot of that energy export to the grid. So they won't see those kilowatts showing up on the bill as energy exported. All the savings from this system are in the self-consumption and the reduction in the power they bought from the grid. Okay. So instead of buying 726 kilowatt hours, they've only had to purchase 400 kilowatt hours for that day. Okay, massive reduction in their usage. Let's look at transformer number two. Transformer number two, we talk about being on the engineering building. Again, same thing, zero watts available from the solar very early in the morning, but we're looking at another beautiful day here, 1st of July where we can see really good solar production and the usage in this area is a lot more stable. This is where all our pool equipment, all our uh, very solid consistent loads are drawn from this transformer and our solar is working perfectly there in the background. This day we only did uh, 250 kilowatt hours. The site used 1.3 megawatt hours or 1300 kilowatt hours. Production is less than a quarter of our consumption but still massive savings. Instead of buying 1.3 megawatt hours, we've only bought 1.05 megawatt hours and all of that energy is being self-consumed. So we can see the solar system interacting with the transformer and that reduction in energy being purchased from the grid. Last site, TR3, the lower uh, part of the school. Um, we are actually connected as a subboard on this uh, supply, so our consumption metering doesn't capture this whole NMI. There are actually other loads and other parts of the school coming off this system. So the load actually looks a little bit low for the size system we've got. We can see that this 100 kilowatt system here exceeds our load, so we're exporting the energy to the grid. Those exports there actually won't actually make it out to the grid because there are other consumers on that NMI or on that transformer prior to that energy going to the street. But same thing again, 289 kilowatt hours for this day, consumption of 415. We do have some energy being exported, but yeah, as discussed, that energy will be self-consumed. So all in all, these systems are performing really well. You know, if we look at TR1 again, 
and we look at energy for the year, 24 megawatt hours of electricity produced, 64 megawatt hours of consumption. So we're a little bit over a third of the energy being consumed, being provided by that system. TR2, same thing, this is just for 2025. 68 megawatt hours of consumption, 20 megawatt hours of production. Again, we're tracking it around that third of the energy or slightly less um, of our solar offset to the uh, consumption. And last but not least, down the bottom, McHenry Center. We've produced 26 megawatt hours. This side is showing a consumption of 30 megawatt hours. We know this transformer uses a little bit more or probably a fair bit more than that. The solar is offsetting that. We're not capturing that full site of data. I hope this was informative. As we can see now, the sun's just starting to break through. We're getting a little bit of wattage through on the lower system. The other one hasn't quite started up. There's a bit of wattage up top as well. So I really hope you've enjoyed going through the data with us, looking at energy self-consumption. That's key to the solar system performance using that energy, offsetting the purchase of power. That's where we get our savings. That's where we get our return on investment. That's why commercial solar makes so much sense when there is a large scale user of electricity. This school could benefit from a larger system, 300 kilowatts stage one. Let's look at what we can do in the future for users like Nudgee College, but other users out there that need that energy offset, that want those bill savings, and also want the environmental credentials. Thanks very much, Eddie from Springers. See you later.